In the early 2000s, you could buy a pretty weird low-priced desktop PC from Walmart. Instead of running Microsoft Windows, it ran Lindos, a commercial Linux distro that claimed compatibility with popular Windows software. And if you think that Microsoft wouldn't like that, you're right. But in a shocking turn of events, Microsoft wound up paying the Lindos people $20 million. So today, let's delve into the weird history of Walmart Linux, give it a quick install, and see if it lives up to the hype. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy Linux-based corporate intrigue, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Lindos Inc. was formed in 2001 to develop the Lindos OS, a commercial Linux distribution that claimed to be compatible with a wide range of Windows software. Fun fact, Lindos was founded by Michael Robertson, who was also behind the 90s mainstay mp3.com. Now, around 2001, Walmart had been experimenting with ultra-low-cost computers, offering cheap PC towers with no operating system installed. Skipping the cost of Windows allowed Walmart to price these things under $300, which is half the price of what you might find from Dell or Gateway. And being cheap and OS-less, these machines were quite popular with Linux enthusiasts. And these enthusiasts were quite enthused in early 2002 when Walmart began offering these systems with Linux pre-installed. It's the year of desktop Linux! Walmart advertised these systems starting as low as $199 through walmart.com, ready to go out of the box with Windows OS and compatible with most Windows software. We'll see about that. As you might imagine, the folks at Microsoft weren't too happy about this and sued Lindos for trademark infringement. I mean, it was competing with Windows, taking market share from Windows, claimed to run Windows software, and it was called Lindos. Well, shockingly, the court ruled against Microsoft, and the judge, who must have been a Linux user, said that Microsoft often used the term Windows generically to describe a windowing operating system, and such systems existed well before the Windows product, such as Apple's Macintosh and the Xerox Park. So in the end, Microsoft wound up offering the Windows people $20 million to buy the Windows name just to protect the Windows trademark, and Windows rebranded as Linspire, which actually still exists today. Honestly, I almost feel bad for Microsoft here. Almost. Anyway, let's go back to the glory days of early 2002 and install Windows 2.1. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, Ugreen. Now, you know the old saying, I green, you green, we all green for power. But what if that power comes in the form of an adorable little robot? This is the Ugreen Nexode RG, which I have here in the 30 watt and 65 watt versions. In addition to being incredibly cute with a mini smart screen that shows charging status through emojis, it's fast and can charge up to three devices at once. It can charge my iPhone 15 Pro Max from 0 to 50% in 30 minutes, or a MacBook Air to 70% in an hour. And look, his little feeties protect the prongs. I've been primarily using it with my Steam Deck, which tops it up from 0 to 50% in about 30 minutes. And I've been using it in conjunction with the RevoDoc Pro 9-in-1 Hub, which has USB 3.2, 4K60 HDMI, 100W power delivery Ethernet, and more. Which makes it a super portable way to hook my deck up to my TV, as well as working great with my MacBook Pro. So check out Ugreen's Black Friday deals for up to 50% off, and use the links out of my description below. Now, this isn't the exact machine that Walmart sold back in the day. Those Microtel machines, for some reason, are impossible to find. Probably because nobody thought to save them. But this is a pretty good approximation of the specs. It's an AMD Doron running at 1 point something gigahertz and has some amount of memory and is right in line with the mid-range machine that Walmart sold as Lindos certified. So let's pop Lindos onto this thing and see what the year of the Linux desktop was all about. Oh yes, big boy monitor. <laughs> all right, well the capture device doesn't like this installer's resolution, 
but should be fine. Just blow through it here. All right, successful install. <laughs> Welcome to Lindos OS. So <laughs> one of the hilarious features of Lindos is that everything runs as root. There are no user accounts, which makes it incredibly unsafe. And we should probably not connect this to the internet because literally there is nothing you can do that's less secure than that. But here we are, the Lindos desktop. All right, we have some of the typical bloatware of the era. Just interesting to see it on Linux. An Earthlink sign up here, AOL. All right, under programs, we actually have quite a lot of stuff. We have uh, some of the KDE built-in stuff. A Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, and Word viewer. Yeah, that's pretty neat. All right, <laughs> what is Potato Guy? Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> my life is now complete. It's not really a game, though. <laughs> what I really find interesting is that they made a little C drive folder with uh, a bunch of stuff for the magic behind the Windows compatibility, which is software called Wine. And Wine is a lovely recursive acronym that stands for wine is not an emulator and it is a windows compatibility layer that runs on top of linux and translates system calls giving you some measure of compatibility with windows native applications and it exists today in a very working state you can run a lot of stuff on Linux, it's meant for Windows. In fact, that's how the Steam Deck runs Windows games on Steam OS, which is Linux. But back in 2001, compatibility was a little more shaky. So I'm curious to see, can we just straight up install a Windows game? This is Mega Race here. Stick this in the CD-ROM drive. Oh, there we go, mounted. Here's install.exe. It's loading up wine, and I think it crashed. All right, let's try driver, which is made for Windows 95 and is on the original CD, so maybe a little better luck with this one. And look, the installer is in here in this tiny window, and I can't expand it. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, we are installing driver. <laughs> I mean, it works. That's pretty impressive. Not exactly user friendly. All right, I guess it installed. <laughs> Let's see if it runs. No compatible 3D devices found. Well, that makes sense. We are just running off the motherboard video. All right, so I don't know if this would have worked if we had a proper video card, and I don't know if a proper video card would work with Lindos. All right, well, I guess we have to try Duke Nukem. All right, install. Install, please. Now it's not looking good. If it can't run Duke, what good is it? All right, well, against my better judgment, I have connected this to the internet, <laughs> running everything as root. Let's open up a web browser and see what the web experience is like here on Lindos OS. All right, it's trying to go to something called twitgoo.com by default. <laughs> All right, let's see, bookmarks. Lindos.com, of course. What kind of version are we running here of Netscape? Oh, 7.0. <laughs> Yahoo does not like this web browser. Let's see. Of course, we have frogfind.com, the search engine that I built for vintage computers that will run on pretty much any web browser. That seems to work just fine.
Let's see, Netscape 7.0, released in 2002, so right when this version of Lindos came out, makes sense. I really like the theme on here too. It's very fun and playful. Let's see if a more bloated site works. There we are on Google. Google search quite a bit slower, but actually it does still work here on Netscape 7. Let's try YouTube. <laughs> Just for fun. Well, the certificates aren't going to work right. But it's trying. <laughs> Alright, well it did technically load YouTube, just it can't run any of the fancy JavaScript. So yeah, good on you, Netscape 7.0. Okay, so that'll do it for this foray into the wacky world of Lindos, the weird Walmart Linux. And it's certainly an interesting footnote in computing history, if not certainly an obscure one. But the Walmart flirtation with consumer Linux didn't stop at Lindos, in fact, they also sold machines with SUSE Linux, SUSE, SUS, SUSE, and some other distributions. And I think that's quite cool. And there's a whole rabbit hole we could go down with playing around with this version of Linux and trying to install modern Linux stuff on here. I think it might be funny to try to see how far we can actually upgrade this since it's just based on Debian. We can probably get it up to a relatively modern version of Debian. But that'll be it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, George Rosansky, Greg Hrutke, Harris Brody, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Pipas, Jason Ezel, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.